Hey there, everyone, and welcome to topic number six in our database design and management class. This topic is going to focus on database administration. In this first video, part one of topic six, I'm going to discuss the database processing environment with a particular focus on the three major categories of database administration functions. Let's begin by reminding ourselves of the dynamic nature of the database processing environment. And this is just to remind us that, hey, these databases, they don't live in isolation, right? Indeed, it's a very active environment. They provide a, a foundation, a data layer that organizations can use. And we can see here that the DBMS sits at the center of the database processing environment. And if you remember from long, long ago, we talked about how only the DBMS can access the database or databases that it controls. None of these other connected elements here can talk to the database directly. It is only the DBMS that has the authority and capability to do that. But the database processing environment involves many different things. It might be something like generating reports. Right, where we pull data out of the database, aggregate it in certain ways, maybe do visualizations, present it so that human beings can digest the information, learn something, and potentially act on it. It's very common to have user interface forms, and these may manifest themselves in mobile apps, on data-driven websites, on standalone application software. But this is where we can enter and view data. And naturally those data go into the database via the DBMS and can be pulled out of the database from the DBMS for display on these types of forms. Lots and lots of queries. These SQL queries are run on a regular basis. These can be ad hoc queries that we just write ourselves as human beings to try to learn something, or they can be queries that are run on a regular basis, typically embedded in some kind of software artifact. So like you're an app on your phone or a data-driven website behind the scenes, we'll be sending SQL queries to the DBMS in order to connect with the data that support those software artifacts. So active server pages, Java server pages, right? These are some of these web technologies. And again, if you have data-driven websites, it's just like another user, just like another application, right? It accesses and works with the data by going through the DBMS. Other application programs, these might be standalone app, apps that run on your Windows machine or your Mac, or they could be mobile apps. So if you're in Android, maybe they're written in Java. If you're uh, supporting some legacy systems, it could be COBOL, right? There's still billions of lines of COBOL code running in the world, even though it's basically been a dead language for a long, long time. There aren't too many companies developing new things in COBOL anymore, but it's out there, right? And we have additional that are connected to the DBMS that can with, or ultimately manipulate the data as well. These being things like triggers, which are event driven SQL statements that the database will run automatically. And we talked about those very briefly during the last topic. And we also have stored procedures, right? So these are SQL based tasks that we can run and they are typically run on an as needed basis. So someone will have appropriate privileges to run them. Maybe for example, you have a stored procedure that is run during the weekly maintenance where you pull all of the transaction data from the past week out of the operational database and move it over into a data warehouse. And that could be carried out by means of a stored procedure. And so these are just pre-programmed series of SQL statements that we can run as needed to accomplish some sort of task that serves the needs of the organization. So collectively, what we see here is a graphical depiction of just the very active base processing environment. And it serves to remind us that our databases don't just live on their own. They are serving a purpose. And that purpose is to support all these other things that organizations do and that rely on data. All right. So as this topic focuses on database administration, a good place to start is with an overview in which we can say, hey, this administration is not just about design, but it involves several other very important tasks as well. And three of the most critical of these functions that we will investigate in detail during this topic are concurrency control. Right? So that's a big part of database administration. 
configuring the database so that it can be used by multiple people or users at the same time, right? Security, right? Data are valuable. If you take any organization of any notable size and you ask yourselves what would happen if we took away their data, what would happen to that company? You immediately get an impression of just how valuable the data are. And so securing those data naturally is of a great importance. So we'll talk about database security and the database security model as we investigate this topic in our class. And the third major critical database administration function is backup and recovery. And the idea here is that data are very, very valuable. So we want to have a way of recovering from a disaster. We hope that disasters will never happen. Right? We hope that no one will come along and spill their coffee on the database server or <laughs> earthquake, fire, tornado, hurricane, flood, any of these kinds of things could potentially destroy our data. And we need to have a way of recovering that so that the organization can continue on and, uh, and recover from the disaster and move forward. So these are these three critical database administration functions that we will explore as we work through this part of our class.